Hello, hello, hello everybody. It's your girl Ashley, the amateur expert, coming to you live today for this episode of Talk Tuesday. Today I am interviewing Melinda and I'm so excited for you guys to hear her story. She is in the room, so we will get her added in. If this is your first time watching, we're going to talk to Melinda about her career path, her idea of success when she first started out, compared to her idea of success today and the tips and motivators she used along the way. She is in the room, Hi. so let's get started. Hey, Melinda, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Um, if you could, please introduce yourself. Um, tell us who you are and what you do currently for work. So my name is Melinda Heron. I am the owner and founder of 103 Collection. It's a lifestyle brand for men and women. It's plant-based products, um, hair care, skin care, and beard care for guys. Um, actually, next month, we'll be celebrating five years in business. So that's a milestone for us. We, Like I said, we started five years ago. And just to be able to see the growth of my brand for five years, it's been amazing. Um, I also launched uh, my She the Icon podcast, which highlights all these great entrepreneurial women, their stories, and yes, beer care, <laughs> <laughs> and their stories. And um, I'm so excited about that. And I came in contact with so many women from doing like expos and things for 103 Collection and then launching my She the Icon podcast. So there I decided to market my own brand, which I just launched this year. And um, I think it's because I have been able to see both sides of mm -hmm. business from being the consumer and also the uh, business owner. So I kind of wanted to like streamline everything and, you know, put it together on a platform where women can really come together, get all the resources that they need and also share my story. So I love that's it. a little bit about me. Yes. I've <laughs> actually been listening to the podcast. It's really good. You give good information. Um and uh, thank you, uh, Michaela. <laughs> um, but you give really good information and your story is phenomenal and the pivots that you've taken are crazy. So I'm excited for you to share um, that with us. So uh, when you were a little girl, what did you want to be? You know what's so interesting? I thought I wanted to be a teacher. And why did but you let me tell that? you how things go. You know what? Because I felt like I've never had a problem with speaking. Mm -hmm. So I always wanted to be the person that, like, if I have knowledge, I'm able to share that with someone else. So I've always had that in me to, like, be a teacher. Like, I, I don't know, like, the aspect of that has always been my dream. I think as I got older <laughs> and being in school with, like, kids that had, like, you know, issues at home and things like yeah. that, I think my focus shifted. And I was like, okay, I don't think I want to be a teacher <laughs> right you know because I was like these teachers they take on a lot like they, they are the second parents and I was just like okay is this something that I really 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 want to do but right. it, it has come back full circle and I'm gonna tell you about that but I do when I probably got about 11 or 12 my mom she was a hairstylist so she would do hair at home okay. after working all day and I was just like my mom was making like two or three hundred dollars a day and I was just like well, I need to do this. This is easy money. Sure. Um, she schedules her clients around her work schedule. So I think from there, I knew I wanted to be in the beauty space. And I knew that I wanted to be a hairstylist because I love the way that it made people feel. Mm -hmm. Like after they got services done, you can yeah. see when they come in, they may not be happy about something. But just to see them after they get their hair done or you know, just anything, just that right. feeling alone is what really pushed me to the beauty space. That's really cool. Um, so I'm guessing that you you, start, you sort of thought success at that time um, had something to do with um, uh, making, like making others feel good. But what else did you think success was um, when you were a little girl? Or when you were you sort of thinking about becoming um, a teacher and or like the hairdresser or um, a stylist? Well, you know, I'm, I, I love sharing my story because a lot of people see me and they don't see like all the things that I've been through. Um, I was a teenage mom and my mom was um, suffering from drug addiction. So just growing up in a household that was very disruptive. But at an early age, I knew that I wanted to do something different with my life. Mm -hmm. I knew I was not going to become a statistic. Right. So, um, 
looking at all of that, I knew that when I was in high school, I was like, I know that entrepreneurship is the way for me to really become successful. Okay. So although I, I started looking for jobs, you know, everybody's first job is usually fast food. Yeah. I tried to get jobs in fast food, couldn't get them. So I said, you know what? God is pushing me to something different. And so I started doing my friend's hair in my kitchen. And right. that is how I got through high school. And it's such an interesting story because my friends would come over, get their hair done, and then they would end up staying. And then we would end up like, you know, partying on the of weekend. Course. So, yeah. you know, it was, it was, it taught me a lot to be mm -hmm. very self-sufficient. And I think that entrepreneurship definitely teaches you that. And then when you have faith at the center of everything, For sure. no matter what you go through, you can overcome anything. And so that is very powerful. Um, and it's a testament of all the pivots that you've made in your career. Um, so can you just sort of give us the journey from um, the stylist, the, the being at home, and then how you transitioned to now having your own hair care line? Well, lifestyle brand that includes a hair care. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. So um, my story is a very unique story and I tell people this all the time because when you go through something like that in life so early on it definitely shifts your mindset you're either going to go one way or the other and I think once I made that decision that I wanted to be at a certain place in life I was very strategic about what I did from that moment on yep. so once I graduated from high school I went straight to cosmetology school and um, it took me about, I think, 18 months to finish that. And then um, from there, I was working in salons. Um, I love that because yeah. at 19, I was making like $800 a week. It was amazing. amazing. Right. So, you know, you I seen certain milestones that I was able to accomplish. I brought my first car brand new. Oh, I love it. Um, that was, you know, a milestone. It was so uh, a rewarding moment for me because, you know, Coming from a background like that and then being put in a position where you are really the one that's bringing in the income mm -hmm. and then having to pivot to still be able to balance life and being a mom, you know, that that was a, a really interesting part of my life. So once I was successful with that in cosmetology, I met my husband and we went to college together and I graduated. So I have a master's degree in health administration. Okay, girl. And that stemmed from, thank you, that stemmed <laughs> from my dad. He pushed me. He was like, listen, you got to go to college. You have to get a degree. And I was a little, not, not, I was a little reserved when it came to that because the entrepreneur in me was like, do I really want to go to All school? Right, right. But, you know, my dad, like, he comes from a generation where that's what they were taught. You go to school, get a degree you know, you save for retirement, you right. retire and, you know, then you travel. Yep. My outlook was not like that. So I'm not saying that I went to college specifically for my dad because it was a rewarding experience. But I just know that the entrepreneur in me was like, you are going to make it regardless whether you go to school or <laughs> oh, not. God, so yeah. that was one thing. And then from there, I actually had an event planning business. I know I'm multifaceted over here. I have so many, it has so many things going on. Yeah, I, I just so, listened to that podcast and I was like, wow, this is so amazing. So I was, I'm happy that you're sharing it here too. Yes, yes. So my event planning business, I did weddings, uh, retreats. Uh, it was amazing. Like I, that was really, at that moment, that was my passion. Like mm -hmm. I loved it. I would wake up planning events on phone calls, emails. Like it just came so natural to me. But at one point, me and my husband both decided, like, is this something that we can really pass on to our children? Right. Okay. And uh, once we, you know, really took a look at the scope of that, we were like, we have all boys. They're not going to want to do event planning. Yeah. So we start really thinking, like, okay, if we were to do a, another business, what would it be? Mm -hmm. And I think once we realized that product-based businesses um, would be more sufficient for us, and then we had to, of course, define um, a need right. and be able to solve that problem. Well, the biggest issue that I have is sensitive skin. My husband also suffers from eczema. Okay. So we knew we wanted to do something in the beauty space. And we knew we wanted it to be something that was healthy for you. Mm 
-hmm. And that is how 103 Collection was born. I love it. <laughs> and it's like a full, sort of like a full circle moment. You're teaching people how mm -hmm. to care for themselves. You're using your cosmetology background. And I'm sure that you took a business course or two um, to help Absolutely. you uh, create your brand. Um, so what um, is your idea of success today? You know what? It, it's so interesting that you say that because five years ago, I would have definitely said, you know, my business. And I think my success comes from us being able to teach our children mm -hmm. that, you know, the way to wealth and success is not necessarily working for someone else. It's about you paving your own path and also really staying focused and believing in yourself. So to me, that's more rewarding than any uh, financial uh, reward mm -hmm. or what type of accolades you can receive. The fact that our kids, because we have three boys and our two youngest, they get it. Like they are just like, I don't want to work for somebody else. I want to, I want to do my own business. Right. And I think to me, that is more rewarding than anything else. That's so exciting. Um, planting the seed at a young age and then they're able to grow. Yes. Um, so what are some tips and motivators that you use along the way? Um, I know that you've had, like I said, many pivots in your career um, and then just like life obstacles. So like, what have you, what have you used to keep yourself encouraged? Well, number one is faith. Like I just, like my aunt, this was like the head of our life. She's my great aunt, actually, my grandmother's sister. So she helped raise me and my sisters. You know, my mom was a single mom at one point. So she helped raise us. So at an early age, I think I was probably about seven or eight. And she had, you know, we got baptized. Okay. And we were baptized as seven-day Adventists. Okay. And I think that just having faith as the base of my life early on, I, I know that that's what got me through everything in life, like hands down. Like I know that, you know, when I was going through all these things with my mom, I would pray like, Lord, please mm -hmm. help me you know, get through this. It was a mental and, you know, physically draining experience. So okay. I would definitely say my faith. Um, my husband is extremely supportive. He is my cheerleader, my ride or die. He, look, he knows exactly when I'm frustrated at my wits end, when tell me to go and like go lay down, take a mm -hmm. break. He knows how to get me all the way together. Because <laughs> he knows sometimes I am an overachiever. Mm. I am um, a semi-perfectionist. Yes, so um, he gets me. So I would definitely say that. And of course, when you have a circle of good friends that can motivate you and, you know, really give you good advice, mm -hmm. you know, that's more important than anything else. Yeah, that's important. Um, so one of the things that I um, heard and listened to um, the, but while you well, on your podcast, you said that you had done a lot of the research on your own when starting your business. And um, I think that that was also very inspiring as I'm in the process of sort of doing the same thing. Um, and when you um, don't necessarily have the budget that you want to get started, mm -hmm. um, I was very much so inspired by you saying that you did what you have to do to get your business started. Um, so I want to ask you, what is something that you um, have learned recently or you're still in the process of learning that you wish you had learned sooner in your career? Oh, my gosh. It's so many. <laughs> I could go down the list. But I would say, like, the biggest, the, the most important things I would definitely say is to research your, your industry. Because I live by the philosophy of don't try to reinvent the wheel. Mm -hmm. I don't know if anybody has heard that, you know, like if you see something is working for somebody else, definitely take those steps and implement that into your business plan. Now, I'm never saying copy what somebody else is doing, right. but why would you want to go and try to recreate something and it's already there? You, everything out here has already been done before, unless you're doing something that's completely innovative right. and I always use the example of like an iPod when that hit the industry mm -hmm. that took a lot of time resources and trust me it, that did not happen overnight that's right. something that they were planning for years before it actually hit the market so I think that um that would be number one number two would definitely be use your resources mm -hmm. a lot of people like to um 
go after or look for somebody that's up on a higher level than them, usually you have so many resources for people that are either in the same um, space as you, right. same business, you know, they're at that same stage in their business. So I would definitely say to use those type of resources and don't waste a lot of money. You know, in the beginning, I wasted a lot of money and a lot of time on things that were not necessarily beneficial for me. Mm -hmm. So I would say in these past three years, I looked at things being more transactional. Okay. And I'm not just talking about financial. I'm talking about in terms of, okay, so if we were to work together or do something together, how am I going to benefit? How is it going to benefit you? Mm -hmm. I just had a conference call about that today. So I think that, you know, if you can put those things in perspective when you're starting a business or if you've already started and you're at a place where you don't know like what next step you should take, be very mindful of exactly what are your goals and what's your plan in order to fulfill those goals. That's good. And you also mentioned on the podcast, um, like finding a mentor or someone that you can bounce your ideas off of. Absolutely. I think a lot of times we think that we have to figure it all out on ourselves or rely on Google, but getting feedback from people who are supportive um, and will give you the truth <laughs> um, is mm -hmm. definitely, definitely a good idea. Um, you have um, actually just linked up with um, Marilyn um, and you guys are doing a collab for Mother's Day. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about that and how you guys decided to come together? Oh, my gosh. So this is like key, especially for us as women business owners. I always talk about collaboration. And the reason why I say that, because it's cross promotional opportunities for you and whoever you um, team up with. Mm -hmm. So me and Marilyn are always looking for ways to do things together um, to get our message out and do cross promotion. So we have this beautiful Mother's Day box that comes with my Marilyn has her own perfume. She um, has perfume and a lotion. And then I'll be doing my plant based skincare facial scrub and toner. So just that conversation. I am the queen of coming up with ideas like I will come up with something and then I get so excited and they always laugh at me because I'm like, Oh my gosh, we gotta do this. We gotta do that. So I'll just be, you know, saying things out and I'm like, Okay, well, we can we can we can restruct it. We can figure it out and just Make sure we take notes and, you know, I get so excited. But, you know, just coming together and wanting to put something together that was special to us. Like we put a lot of love into what we, what we create and we put a lot of blood, sweat and tears into our brands. Like I think she's been in business for six years. For me this year, it makes five. So we just wanted to do something um, together and show that, you know, as business owners, not only friends, that we can collaborate and put together something amazing. I think that's great. I think a lot of times people think that um, there's only enough room for one person or um, one brand or like you have to, what do they, what mm -hmm. do they say? Don't, you don't dim someone else's light by lighting them or one of those Absolutely. cliche things. But I'm happy that you guys have found a way to work together and build your brand's um at the same time um so i think we're winding down to the end of the show um you've given us some really good insight um and some awesome information in your story is incredibly inspiring um i want to give you the platform right now to talk about anything that you have coming up um i know you did a webinar last week i don't know if you have any more coming up or anything else that you'd like to share with us well, actually, um, I have a couple of webinars that will be coming up, um, but I encourage everybody, um, make sure you visit my website because I can't talk about it yet. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay, um, something new coming up. Right. I have okay. some great things coming up. So if you are a business owner or you are thinking about starting a business, make sure that you um, sign up at allaboutmelinda.com. And um, we will be the first to know when everything is released. It's amazing. And I'm so excited about that. We actually, like I said, we'll be celebrating our five-year anniversary for 103 Collection, the plant-based product line. We have some surprises for that, too. Mm -hmm. So you have to make sure that you join us um, online. Follow us on social media, All About Melinda and 103 Collection. Um, yeah, like I said, I'm just, this is a great year. And for anybody that may be 
suffering or going through something during this epidemic and you know you may need some advice or something like that just shoot me a dm um thank you brianna <laughs> thank you Brianna. <laughs> and yeah shoot me a dm or send me an email and um you know i i'm I, i'll set up consultations all the time we do 15 minute consultations for free and then i do um other consultations as well so make sure you check us check me out and i'll be ready to meet some of you guys that's awesome and so um before we go i am the amateur expert i claim to know a little bit about a lot so if you could please share with me a random tidbit of information oh gosh okay so i you know what I, okay, so this is so funny because I had an hour-long conversation earlier with somebody. And um, information that I would want to share is a lot of people are looking into um, these grants and things like that for the small businesses. I would definitely say do your research because there's a lot of information out here. Some of it is very misleading. Mm -hmm. So there are some grants that will, are forgivable and there are some that you have to pay back. So I would definitely say do your research on that. And also stay true to who you are when mm -hmm. it comes to representing your brand. Don't let anybody um, discourage you from doing something that you feel wholeheartedly about. That there's a difference between you believing in something and you know it, it just can't go anywhere. But if you see the potential and you believe in it wholeheartedly, then, you know, stay the course of your dream and, and work hard at it. Don't and don't think it's going to happen overnight. Mm. You know, you got to put part. the work in. <laughs> yes. That part. So early congratulations to you. Five years in business is a big deal. Um, yes. And so proud of you. Um, thank you for being on the show. And I'll definitely have all the information in the show notes so that when people go back to rewatch, they can um, follow both of your handles and uh, sign up for your, um, a sub not subscription, but your newsletter or your announcements. Mm -hmm. So thank yes. you so much for being on the show. And I look forward thank to talking you for to having you soon. Me. Absolutely. Yes, thank you for having me. This was thank great. You. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye. <laughs>